In the close-knit community of Crockett Island, new arrival Father Paul Hill led a devout Catholic flock astray when supernatural events began shaking the fragile foundation of the town and its religious principles. During a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and Damascus, Father Monsignor Pruitt, the long-standing priest of Crockett Island, wandered in the desert due to his deteriorating mental health and got lost in a sandstorm. Desperate to survive and locate shelter, he took refuge in a cave that hid an ancient evil. Father Monsignor's unwavering faith, coupled with his dementia-riddled mind, portrayed the winged, blood-drinking vampire as an angelic messenger from God. The vampire didn't hesitate to feast on its latest prey, and after some deliberation, rescued the dying old man by shedding his blood and feeding it to him. This act not only rejuvenated Father Monsignor to his prime, but also reignited his religious fervor and faith in the sacrament. As he had witnessed, drinking the blood of a quote-unquote angel and eating of its flesh brought about a miraculous transformation within him, and he eagerly sought to spread the good news to his flock on Crockett Island. Under the guise of Father Paul Hill, he returned to Crockett Island with the angel in tow and nourished the unsuspecting community with the vampiric sacrament. Little did he know that each of the alleged miracles were simply the upfront cost associated with the inevitable transformation to come. Youth, rejuvenation, and improved health were all benefits those who partook in the sacrament experienced. However, after the first death, any who accepted vampiric blood in the form of the Eucharist during Mass would be relegated from humanity and reborn as a creature with a deadly sensitivity to light and an insatiable thirst for blood. In due time, those closest to Father Paul Hill blithely took illegal measures to conceal the transgressions of the newly converted priest after his apparent resurrection. Upon his rebirth, the priest suffered from a new type of hunger that only life-nourishing blood could temporarily keep at bay and slew Joe in a frenzied state. In an attempt to confront Father Paul about his lies regarding Joe's whereabouts, Riley Flynn was attacked and reluctantly joined the vampiric ranks. Desperate to share the truth with Aaron Green and reveal the happenings to the mainland, Riley made the ultimate sacrifice. But unfortunately, it was in vain. Aaron returned to the crockpot in hopes to save those who would soon be unwillingly converted to bloodthirsty beasts, and so a plan was formed. Those who were aware of Father Paul's plan worked to gather all church-going inhabitants of the island as a final test of faith. Save for all the boats, all other forms of transportation and communication, as well as methods of escape, were sabotaged. In the final night, members of the congregation were provided with the choice to end their human lives by consuming 1080 poison and embracing immortality in the second life. Father Paul's angel graced the people with its present and beheld its loyal subjects. It was a horrific show of blind faith and man-turned-monster that ended in a bloodbath. As the pools of blood painted the church's interior, Father Paul realized the error of his ways. The violence and animalistic behaviors of his once pacifist flock of sheep was no more. What remained was a bloodthirsty and ravenous pack of wolves masquerading as devout Christians eager to demonstrate their faith. In the end, a small group of individuals, led by Sheriff Hassan and Aaron, worked together to ensure the newly converted citizens of Crockett Island would never make it to the mainland. Destroying the boats and inadvertently causing a fire that would consume every standing structure on the island in the process. As a result, the vampires would have no shelter to shield them from the purifying rays of the sun and they would meet their end. Only two teenagers, Warren and Lisa, made it out alive as they escaped on a small canoe to wait out the next sunrise, avoiding the first death in the process. Many of the vampires began to realize that their actions were not caused by their transformation, but simply because of their newfound perception that they were holier than thou and that their actions were above any form of retaliation by those who did not conform to their radical beliefs. Inspired by the Flynn family who had refrained from taking any lives despite their hunger to consume blood, the remaining vampires joined the couple in song and returned to the dust from whence they came. As Warren and Lisa watched the sunrise, they saw the entirety of Crockett Island had been consumed by flames, reminiscent of the lake of fire referenced in the Bible, and also bore witness to the final flight of the vampire who sired the converts on the island. As the fire purged the last remnants of the evil that remained, including the original vampire, Lisa noted that she could no longer feel her legs. This is indicative that the dark gift that was transmitted by way of ingesting the vampire's blood 
had some sort of supernatural ties to its progenitor. This is supported by the fact that Lisa was seen consuming the sacrament in previous episodes that notably took place early in the week before the Easter Mass. So it would seem that by vanquishing the source of the sacrament, those who had avoided the first death could be free of the blood curse, ending the vampiric line once and for all. Midnight Mass was full of provoking concepts that blurred the lines between faith and mental conditioning, religion and cultist worship, and namely parallels between symbolic rites outlined in Christianity and vampirism. It was director Mike Flanagan himself who stated that the series represents the two sides of faith that exist within himself, as he himself was raised Catholic. This duality is present in many recurring themes and motifs throughout the limited series and will undoubtedly spur debate amongst people of differing ideologies. If you don't believe me, be sure to check out the comments section below. <laughs> and until next time, it's the Inhuman One signing out. Welcome to my universe.